So recently it was the first time ever that I could no longer use Linux at my university. And it's actually a bit crazy, to be honest. Essentially, my university has always said that, yeah, you can use Linux, you can use, you know, Windows, whatever. Like, it, it didn't matter. And so far, with using Linux at my university, it's been literally completely fine. Of a sudden, I had a, basically, a theoretical exam asking about, like, programming concepts like, oh, stack queues, you know, just abstract data types, all that. And then to do this exam, what you had to do is you installed some program that was, it's basically borderline, like, software, like, malware. It's actually basically malware. You install the program, and it locks your computer. And essentially, like, you can't access any other feature, and you're only allowed to access that. You can't switch tabs, everything. It, like, I think you have to give it admin permission just to even, like, install, because it has to, like, change so much of the computer. It's, like, border, and usually they're telling you, oh, yeah, also disable your antivirus because, you know, the antivirus is going to be like, whoa, this program's a bit spooky. And it's borderline, like, spy, spyware program, which is really, like, stupid. Like, why, why should a, you know, you have to install spyware software that, again, it's closed source, you can't really tell how it's being used. It's just, like, it's a bit spooky. Like, that's the only thing. Like, I'm not even necessarily against closed source software completely. You know, I can understand, like, there's a lot of good closed source software. And, you know, sometimes you pay for software and it's actually just, you know, it's worth it. However, when it comes to software that, you know, it's free, but, like, it's it's literally, like, spyware. It's hard to really make a case for it. And then, obviously, this software doesn't actually work on Linux because I'm guessing it would just be, number one, really hard to do a Linux version because, you know, distros and different window managers, all this, like it'd be hard to develop it. And number two is that Linux users tend to not really tolerate this kind of stuff. So for me, I actually had to, I had to borrow my mom's laptop just so I could actually use uh, the software. Because otherwise then, you know, obviously like it sucks, but like at the end of the day, I have to use the software if I want to like pass the test. And that was like 50% of my entire like programming assignment. Like 50% was just this test asking about like, oh, what's the time complexity of like you know like just kind of like that kind of stuff but to be honest i'm curious to how it will be in the future as we become more and more dependent like thinking about it back in the day there was no such thing as laptops but there were programming courses and you know was structured and way differently like more focused on textbooks there's literally no textbooks in my course to my knowledge like i've not had to i there's no like no textbooks at all and you know it makes me wonder in the future how is it going to be is it going to be more tolerant to Linux as Linux, I don't know, recently Linux has grown a lot more than it has, you know, in the past. And it's gotten a lot more popular and mainstream. But I wonder if, let's say it keeps going, I think it will always be a niche. It will always be a niche. It'll be, you know, Windows, Mac, and then Linux, just like that little, you know, there's like a couple people. From my course, I've only met like a couple other people that even know what Linux is. Like some people, like most people like know it, but they don't use it. And then the amount of people that use it out of my cohort, like I think there's like a thousand people, 900 people taking programming, like same course as me. It was about from like the people that I've seen, maybe like five, six, including me, maybe like 10, maybe there's actually like 20 in total, but I'd probably guess that. So it's a very small percentage. And I wonder, I'm guessing the percentage is probably going to remain the same or maybe grow a little bit over time. But how will it be? Are we going to be using more invasive software? I think I think so. I think most people they don't really care. They don't really care that oh, you know, I have to use this program or this program. Like, how is this program? Like, oh, this program is a little bit spooky. For example, like Zoom. Like Zoom's used like everywhere. Even though, to my knowledge, it's again not a good program. It's like pretty, you know, it's a little bit dangerous. A little bit of a dangerous program, and. You know, same with all these other, like, closed off software. You know, most people, they're just like, well, I have to download it, done. Like, most people are already on Windows, it doesn't matter. Like, as long as they can just click the button and it downloads for them. But, you know, it's kind of sad to see. I hope to see more people in the future care a little bit more about their, I guess, computer privacy, their hardware privacy. They're not just downloading, like, anything and everything. And here's, and here's the additional, and here's the other interesting thing, is that when we took this kind of assessment... We were all in one, you know, big room, just kind of everyone like what was on tables and you're just doing the exam and there's people walking around. Like, it's not like you can just like switch tabs. Like there was no like one that was like, no one was really in such a position where they were like fully hidden. I guess I understand like 
you know, if someone's being really smart, they quickly tab. But if you're looking that sus, you're like quickly uh, all tabbing on all this and you're just checking the room, then I feel like you're going to be caught. You're going to be caught for sure. So I feel like it's just unnecessary. It's unnecessary. And if you're already there physically, there's people physically like walking around. I feel like it's just, it's a little too step. It's a little too far to then have a program that is like sitting like very low in your operating system, like pretty close to your OS and is able to literally view everything. It's just a little bit again. And you don't know what the code does. That's the, that's the greatest thing that I ever learned is that closed source literally means you have zero idea what the code does. You just have to trust. You have to trust that everything that they say it does, it does. And if it doesn't, then that's just too bad. Too bad, too sad. Like it's actually it's actually mind boggling. Genuinely is. And then when you compare it to something like not even Linux necessarily, but just open source, you can literally check the code what it does. And the beauty of that is that most people are not these hundred X programmers, these 10 X programmers that they're going to make the best code. So when, you know, let's say you make some kind of like, know, you make some kind of program, open source, publish it. Some people use it. They actually really like it, but they like, they're going through the code. They're like, just want to check, like, nah, you know, let's see how it's done. And they notice, wait, why is he doing it like that? That's like very inefficient. You can just do it like this and it's much better. Stuff like that. Closed source, you can't. So you should, closed source kind of leads to, it depends. Like I would say that sometimes it would lead to very bloated, very intensive programs, but it also depends because it's genuinely, like it's generally a company, a big company that's funded. They can afford to pay engineers and programmers and all this to like make the code efficient and review it and stuff. So it's kind of like here and there, here and there. But overall, I'd say there's something much more beautiful about the open source, just you know, community, add on to it, this and that. It's a lot better in my opinion. Also, if you guys really like how my setup looks and you're interested in kind of like emulating it, check the top link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share this video with anyone else if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.